let's say we had a cylinder of a certain radius r and a certain height h. And let's say that we wanted to find the minimal amount of material that would be required to manufacture this can to hold, say, 750 milliliters of liquid. Well, we could use geometry, algebra, and calculus to help solve this problem. First, we know that one milliliter is one centimeter cubed, so 750 milliliters is equivalent to 750 centimeters cubed. And we know that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, so we can substitute our value for volume into the equation, and we would get 750 equals pi r squared h. Let's isolate one of the variables, and the easiest one to do here is h, so we can divide both sides by pi r squared, and we would get 750 divided by pi r squared equals h. So we have a relationship between the height and radius of the cylinder, and we'll call this equation 1. Now, if we were going to manufacture this cylinder, we would need to make the top, which is a circle. We'd need to make the bottom, which is also a circle, exactly the same size circle. And we need to make the sides, which would actually be a rectangle if we opened up the cylindrical part. Now, each of these parts would represent the surface area of the cylinder. So surface area is the addition or sum of the A1 plus A2 plus A3. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared, and we have two of these, the top and the bottom of the cone. So this would be pi r squared here and pi r squared here. And the area of the rectangular part would be length times width, where the length here is the circumference of the circle. So the area would be 2 pi r times the height h. So we can add it here, 2 pi r h, to give us an equation for the surface area of the cylinder. Simplifying this equation, we would get, so this 1 pi r squared and 1 pi r squared would be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And we'll leave it like that for now. So that would represent the surface area of, this, of the cylinder. And we want to find what is the minimum surface area that would be required to hold 750 milliliters of liquid. And we know that a maximum or a minimum occurs when the derivative of a function is equal to zero. So our task will be to find the derivative of the surface area, or SA primed, and set that equal to zero. Now when we look at the surface area equation, we see that it is in relation to two variables, radius and height. It is much easier to find a derivative if the relationship is only to one variable. So let's use our relationship in equation 1 between radius and height and substitute that into equation number 2. And as we'll see, we can find the surface area in relation just to radius. So we would get SA is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 750 over pi r squared, which was the height. And working this out, we would get 2 pi r squared plus, we can cancel the pi's here, and one of the radiuses, radii, and we would end up with 1500 
over r. And another way to write this using our laws of exponents would be 2 pi r squared plus 1500 r to the minus 1. Now we can take the derivative of, of the surface area using the sum rule and the power rule. So our derivative, sa primed, would be, so the first term here would, using the power rule would be 4 pi r, and the second term here would be minus 1500 r to the minus 2. And that would represent our derivative. Now, as we said before, in order to find a max or a min, we set the derivative equal to 0. So we can see here, let's put in s prime to be 0 and solve for r. And if we did that, we would get 0 equals 4 pi r minus 1500 r to the minus 2. Bring over the negative 1500 r to the minus 2, we would get 1500, positive 1500, over r squared is equal to 4 pi r. Cross multiplying, we would get 1500 equals 4 pi r cubed. And dividing by the 4 pi, we would end up with 1500 divided by 4 pi equals r cubed. And to finish off, if we took the cube root of both sides, we would end up with r equaling 4.9, and our units are centimeters. So now we know one of the dimensions of our cylinder, the radius, to give us the minimal surface area. So we can come back up here and say that our radius here would have to equal 4.9 centimeters. So how do I find the height? Well, we know the relationship between the height and the radius here. So if we use that to substitute our radius into this equation, we should end up with the height. Let's move over to the side here to work that out. I'll just rewrite our relationship here. Height was equal to 750 divided by pi r squared. And our radius was equal to 4.9 centimeters. So height is equal to 750 divided by pi times 4.9 squared. And when we work this all out, we will end up with 9.8 centimeters. So we can come back here and we now know the dimensions of our cylinder. But what we have to ask ourselves now is, is that a minimum? Because we know that taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero will give us either a max or a min. So we have to verify that this was actually the minimum um, dimensions for surface area. So to do that, let's come over to the side again. Let's take some points. Let's take our radius, r, and find some points to the left and to the right of our value that we determined. So 4.9 is in the middle. And if I pick a radius point to the left, I could choose, say, 1. And to the right, I could choose the point 10. And let's plug these points into our derivative function and see what they give us. Recall that our derivative, sa primed, was equal to 4 pi r minus 1500. And I'll put write it this way with the r squared on the bottom. And we, when we plug the value 1 into the equation here, we don't have to actually work it out completely. I can tell by just looking at this that the, the first term will be about 4 pi, and the second term will be minus 1,500. So we know that the value is going to be a negative. 
So that's what I'm interested in. The, the, the slope of the tangent line, because that's what the derivative tells us, at the point 1 is a negative value. You can also see here why I chose the value 1 and not, say, 0, which might be an easier calculation. If I use the point 0 for r, you can see that the second term would give us um, an undefined value because r squared, would, 0 squared, would give us 0 in the denominator. So that's why I chose the point 1. So let's go and move on and see what happens if we substitute the point 10 into here. Now if I did that, I can see that the first term would be about 40 pi, and the second term, 10 squared is 100, so it will be about 15. So I can see right away that this is actually going to be a positive. So the slope of the tangent line at 10 will be with pointing up, or a positive value. And we already know that 4.9 into the derivative gives us a value of 0. So if we look at the slope of the tangent line at each of these points, we can see that the first one here, point 1, would be a negative, sloping down. Uh, 4.9 would be 0, so it's a horizontal tangent. And the point 10 is positive, so it's sloping up. And therefore, this forms a cusp, like so, which means it must be a minimum. So we've now verified that a cylinder that has radius 4.9 centimeters and height 9.8 centimeters will hold 750 milliliters of fluid with minimal surface area used to manufacture the can. So what is that surface area? Well, we can just go back to our surface area formula, which is over here. Right here. And plug the values in and see what we get. Now let's come back over to the side here and do the calculations. So we know that surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. 2 times, we'll use 3.14 for pi. Our radius is 4.9 squared plus 2 times 3.14 times 4.9 times 9.8. And when we work that all out, we end up with 452.35 centimeters squared. Another interesting thing that we found out, if we go back up here, is we've actually determined that the minimum amount of surface area required to hold a given volume will occur when the radius is exactly half the height. So I'll let me could write that out as follows. Okay. So we could come here to say that the radius is equal to half the height of a cylinder. We will end up with minimum surface area. And that's it.